down health care right now because costs, of course, continue to rise for Americans and the fallout of Obamacare also affecting pharmaceutical companies and health care providers. Joining us right now is Steward Healthcare Chairman and CEO Ralph De La Torre. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. What has been the impact of Obamacare from your standpoint? Well, you know, in Massachusetts, we had Obamacare start several years ahead of the United States. And, and I, I think the, the fundamental flaw with Obamacare is that it didn't really reform health care. What this it was about insurance. Yeah, it expanded access without really dealing with the underlying cost issues of health care. And any time you expand access without figuring out how to pay for it or how to make it more cost effective and more efficient, then costs spiral out of control and they usually get borne, as a case in Massachusetts, by both government and business and small business disproportionately. And in, in fact, Alan, this is exactly the point you were making earlier, the cost of Obamacare is hurting small business. Yeah, I mean, the, the mandates are kind of fully kicked in now and people know what, what the ramifications are. So you add that layer of cost onto a small business that's you know, operating on a razor thin margin already, doesn't have the, the, as large a revenue base or cost base to, share, you know, to spread out and readjust budgets. So the bottom line is it's just a big new price tag that we have to figure out how to pay. And unfortunately, some of that figuring out means we're not gonna pay it, we're gonna reduce staff, or we're gonna find other ways to employ people around the system, for example, employing people through an LLC as opposed to putting them on a W-2 paycheck. Not or what, or what? raise costs, right? I mean, that's another way to do it. I mean, they can trickle it back into their customers. And so well, that's Kevin, it would be great if they could. The fact of the matter is, not so easily done, right? right, so, right. so, Doctor, I'm sure you've had a chance to look at some of the plans being put out there, mm -hmm. and I'm talking GOP candidates at yep. this point. Um, Donald Trump on his website calls his health care plan health care reform to make America great again. But he is very similar to his GOP uh, counterpart saying that he wants to get rid of Obamacare and he wants to get rid of the individual mandate. Has anybody put out anything that catches your eye as a professional in the industry as the best plan? No, I mean, no one's dealt with the underlying problems in healthcare and that it's inefficient. The way we deliver care in America is very costly. It tends to be end of life. So if one of them was listening right now, what would you say is the first thing that they would need to do to address the health care system in this country as president? They need to change it from a revenue-driven system to a cost-based system. So in America, hospitals, physicians, every clinics, everything works on trying to drive top-line revenue growth. It's high-end products, high-end consumerism. And it's not around really figuring out what the population needs and matching the resources we have to the needs. It's all about enticing patients to the one step up whiz bang in the latest and greatest in healthcare. Which is why you've been consolidating hospitals. Mm -hmm. Is there much more consolidation, do you think, in the hospital space to come? So we use hospitals differently. We're not really a hospital company. We have a, we're a physician company, an outpatient base. We take care of the covered life. We take care of the entirety of the patient. Our hospitals are simply ways that we can control costs to provide patients with everything they need in healthcare. So more consolidation? Do you think we'll see more mergers? I think there will be consolidation. I mean, our, our entire public policy, whether you're Democrat or Republican, is really aimed at lowering, has to be aimed at lowering the cost of care. Well, that's code for we need to keep, keep patients out of hospitals. And we should be keeping patients out of hospitals. So how do you keep patients out of hospital, decrease the need without downsizing hospitals? Mm. What did you make of seeing Dr. Carson, who may be getting out of the race, he's mm -hmm. not participating in the debate tonight, but what did you make of seeing a neurosurgeon, a former neurosurgeon, run for president? Well, I mean, aside from, the, from, from his social or political issues, I, I loved it. You know, hey, a physician should rule the universe. Why not? You're a surgeon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, had, you had mentioned in Massachusetts, actually, a lot of the costs were borne on the businesses, but then also the state. So how did it impact Massachusetts on a statewide basis um, affecting their economy? So, so Medicaid picked up anywhere from 20 to 25 percent, depending on how you do the math, of all health care coverage. Then increased coverage to 300 percent of federal poverty level. And that's fine, except Medicaid is not a health care insurer. It's simply an entitlement that pays claims. And that's not what we need. We actually need care management, case management. We need primary care. We need a way to take care of people, not just a way to pay claims. And what happens in small businesses is as you start, as Medicaid starts taking up more of the cost, there happens to be cost shifting to commercial. 
Well, as the commercial market costs go up, large businesses, self-insured businesses can shift. They can do plan design. They can change their benefits. Small businesses that literally have to buy products off the shelf can't do that. They can't adapt. And if you look at the cost of small business premiums in Massachusetts, they've, they've soared. So it's stifling and it's not going to yes. work. Let's look at the delivery side. This was supposed to reduce pay, pay for services and increase this notion of pay for outcomes. Mm -hmm. No one's ever been able to define for me what pay for outcomes mm -hmm. means and how do we measure outcomes? Mm -hmm. How does well, that work? Outcomes are really hard in medicine, right? Because ideally an outcome is this person has cancer, did they survive? Well, that's five, six, seven, eight years down the line. So we try to get leading indicators. You know, it's not did the diabetes give you heart failure, is how well are you at measuring diabetes? And it's just not the same thing. It's the same thing with transparency. We've still never proven that putting on a website, we have ultimate transparency in Massachusetts, what different hospitals or doctors get paid actually drives the individual consumer. And remember, most consumers in healthcare are not the 20, 30 year olds that have the internet uh, on, on every device. They, the, the, the most consumers are the older, the elderly, the Medicaid. Right, patients. those younger are not, are not sick and, and no. don't intend to be. By the way, before you go, you were the chief of cardiac surgery at Harvard's Beth Israel. I know heart disease is mm -hmm. the number one killer still, right? Yep. Any progress in terms of heart disease, diabetes, since yep. it is still the number one killer of Americans? Well, yes, we've made a lot of progress, but the problem is getting people to buy into having responsibility for their own care, right? I mean, we've made, we've made progress on both sides. We've made progress on the end of life, I, when, patient, when patients have heart disease, the coded stents, the more the, the advances we've made in surgery, keep people alive longer, um, you know, pay some, certain types of pacemakers. But the real key is getting patients to just be healthy. Yeah, all right. D Dr. Ralph De La Torre, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for so having me. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it this morning. Mm -hmm. Kevin,